What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Counter Punch Podcast. And today, we will be giving our UFC 300 full card fight predictions and breakdowns. But before we get into that, if you're new to these, my name is Lucas Cohen. His name is Rohan Borges. We have arrived. UFC 300. Finally. Four straight painful cards. <laughs> We're here. Man, I'm so excited. From the very first fight of the night to the main event, all of these fights are bangers. How you doing? Overall thoughts on this card? And, I'm, uh, yeah. I'm great, man. I'm great, and I'm so excited for this freaking card. Like, off the top of my head, it's the best card I've ever seen. On paper, I hope it delivers. I think the, the few top uh, fights, the co-main event and the main event will. Um, I love the third fight on the card. Gaethje Holloway, such a banger, man. This card is just so stacked. I'm so excited. How, how about you, bro? How, how are you? I mean, there's not a bad fight on this card. You know what's crazy? I feel like the fight I'm probably least excited for is the co-main event. Zhang yeah. Weili versus Yan Zhao Nan. And that. I'm saying that because, you know, from a gambler's perspective, right? Like, Andrade Rodriguez, I've got a big bet on that fight. Uh, even Harrison Holm, not even from a gambler's perspective. I just, I'm just excited to see how Harrison does. Mm -hmm. If there's a fight, like, I'm least excited for, it's the co-main event. That's a championship fight. Yeah. That's saying something about this card. I'm, I'm so, so excited. I mean, just compare this card to UFC Vegas 90. Yeah, exactly. Insane, that like, run, man, that four-card run was horrible. And last week was where, like the tipping point for me as somebody that, you know, has to research every fighter on the card. There's not many uh, exciting fighters that I get to, you know, do a deep dive on. But for this card, I mean, top to bottom, we just got killers, former champions. We are kicking off the card with two former champions. That is just, that, that is a, t a sign of how good this card is. So I am just so excited. I really feel like the MMA gods bust us because not a single fight has been canceled. On yeah, man. I um, Prayers, prayers. We are just going to yeah, knock yeah. on wood. No, please, weigh-ins <laughs> go well, everything. Yes, sir. Yes, please. sir. Please. Um, I'm itching to get into this. Let's start with the first fight of the night. Davison Figueredo versus Cody crazy, Garbrandt is crazy. the first fight of the night. Absolutely wow. ridiculous. Let's talk about it. Um, I think it's a bad stylistic matchup for Cody Garbrandt, if I'm going to be completely honest. I, I just, you look at the level of competition, he's beat in his you know two fight winning streak trevin jones and brian kelleher mm -hmm. now he's going to davison figueredo we just saw what davison figueredo did to rob fine again not to do mma math we don't like to do that here but cody garbrandt's taking a massive step up in competition and you just can't deny that i i wouldn't say garbrandt has a weak chin but man he's just his striking defense is just so so bad even that kelleher fight mm -hmm. in which he looked incredible you can just see with his combos, he's always he's never fixed, you know, his flaws since those Dillashaw fights. Mm. Since even way back, that Almeida fights, just the way he blitzes, no striking defense at all. I think if Figueredo is smart, he'll he'll knock Cody Garbrandt out. It's just just don't get into a war with mm -hmm. Garbrandt because mm -hmm. you know that gives Garbrandt the chance of catching him. I think as long as Figueredo's patient, he'll find the chin of uh, Cody No Love Garbrandt and uh, knock him out. That is my prediction. I'll say uh, round two KO for Davis and Figueredo. How you feeling on this one? Yeah, I gotta agree with you on the on the winner side. I th I got Figueredo all day every day. I think it's a bad stylistic matchup, but more so because Figueredo is so well rounded, and the grappling of his is where I really struggle to think how is Cody gonna have an advantage here, especially if the if the fight does hit the mat. Because on the feet, I mean, not only the age and the speed and the power advantage probably lies with Figueredo here. But if he at any point in the fight feels like, oh, Garbrandt's starting to have some success now, because this guy is, is a veteran. He's seen and been in there with every kind of style. So, you know, I think he's going to have some points in this fight where he's, he's finding the chin of Figueredo. But if he gets worried at any point, he can just bank on the fact that I'm the better grappler. I have submission wins. I'm a former, former champion. He can get this fight down to the ground at any point, I feel, and probably get a submission win. So I think I'm actually leading Figueredo by decision. But I do think he wins inside the distance just because Garbrandt, man, at this age, like it's, a, it's such a big step up from his last fight. I don't see how he wins this one for real. So you're going inside the distance? I'm going decision? inside the distance, inside yeah. Inside the distance, yeah. all right, yeah. I just don't see how Garbrandt escapes, you know. Davidson Figueredo, flyweight or bantamweight, this guy's an absolute mauler, man. Yeah, and, and people people were thinking, you know, how would he fare at the higher weight class? And we saw in the last fight against Font, he pieced him up. Like, that was not a close fight by any measure. And to make that side sort of statement in your debut at the division, I think that just puts the whole division on notice. And for Garbrandt, like, how can he really feel confident coming in here, feel like, oh, I got the advantage on the feet? Like, you obviously don't based on his last fight. So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty confident in this one, too. I do think it will be, like, a war in round one. And honestly, I do think Garbrandt will have success. Like, I see people on Twitter saying this is going to be, Figueredo is going to run through Garbrandt. I honestly think... I could see that, though. I could really see I that. I could see it, but I do think Garbrandt will have his moments. I do. Yeah. Okay. But I do feel, you know... 
there, there's a difference. I mean, one has good striking defense, one doesn't. Yeah. One has a great chin, one doesn't. Um, so I'm going to side with uh, Davis and Figueredo by brutal knockout. And something I didn't mention at the top, mm -hmm. we're doing one of our final free trials for the Discord. I mean, we're not going to do another free trial for a while. Yeah. But we're being generous, are we not? UFC yeah, 300, free bets, but not only free bets. I mean, we were on, what, an eight-fight winning streak, eight-card winning streak, eight-major-card event winning streak. And uh, it was halted yesterday yeah. because Chris Curtis got robbed. I personally wouldn't call it a robbery, but I could definitely see how Very you could score fight. the fight for Chris Curtis. So it was definitely an unfortunate way to end the streak, but we're going to get right back to it. You know? That's what I'm, but what I'm saying. We're going to get right back to it. So many oh, bets already locked in. Exactly. We got bets already. Bro. But not only that, we have full webinar video breakdowns, write-ups, full-on write-ups, pages of write-ups this yeah. guy's doing, yeah. uh, fighter bios, the pros and cons for every single fighter. And uh, yeah, so much content for you to find there. We will have a successful night at UFC 300. So if you want in on that, free trial, link below. Bl link in what? The description of this video, yeah. Just you'll yeah. see free UFC 300 bets. Just click on the link below and you'll access those. Enough of me talking about that. Let's get into the second fight on the card. Bobby Green will be taking on Jim Miller. Rohan, here's a thing about this fight. I feel like this is one of the fights that I, I really don't know who's going to win. Yeah. A year ago, I'm picking Bobby Green all day, every day. But you can't pick Bobby Green with confidence after his last fight against Jalen Turner. After he got, I mean, the ref. It was the ref's fault. Let's be, let's be but real. It doesn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it doesn't matter. <laughs> he this took a lot of damage. He took a lot of damage. Yeah, it was bad. It was it bad. Was bad. Um, I feel like Jim Miller will be live for a finish this entire fight. The minute winner will be Bobby Green. It's either Bobby Green on points or Jim Miller by finish. I don't know. It's so hard to call. I'll let you go first. I'm picking Jim Miller, man. And it's it's just because Bobby Green has a way of fighting. We all know Bobby Green. He's he's an entertainer at the end of the day, but he's not the smartest guy. And that has been his Achilles heel throughout, you know, the majority of his career. Like he has quality wins. He's faced so many good opponents. But when it gets down to winning time and just locking in to to get a victory, like I don't know if you can really count on Bobby Green to always do that. Like like you said, I think he might be the minute winner here. Land the cleaner strikes. His uh, sequences may be more impactful in the judges' eyes, but Jim Miller, man, there's a reason this guy is fighting on this card, and he's unranked. You know, like, just looking at the name Jim Miller and looking at his resume, you'd be like, why is he on this card? He is a legend, and he is on this card to liven up that arena from the freaking moment that he steps in. I think everybody is going to be, be behind Jim Miller in this fight, and I think that might power him through. Like, I could see him just gutting out a victory here and and I, like you said who do i think gets a finish if there is a finish in this fight i'd probably say jim miller because Agreed. he's the safer fighter i think i trust his chin way more than bobby green at this stage and what's the age difference between these two bobby green is 37 jim miller's 40 right so it's really not that crazy like i i, I just if bobby green is not smart and it's never really a lock with him I think Jim Miller is live here, and what is he right now on the odds? I, I'm, I'm definitely I believe like that. plus one fifty. Yeah, I love that. Right. I love that. It's just a straight bet. Jim Miller is gonna be my pick, and I think I'm gonna go by decision. I'm, I don't think Bobby Green. Gets, it's a three round fight. I think the third round we're just gonna see an all out war, and on the grappling especially, I think Jim Miller has a sizable advantage. So I'm gonna give Jim Miller the edge by decision. But by it's decision. gonna be a war. Yeah, decision. It's gonna, I think I, I could see, see a war. Bobby Green's been in some wars too, bro. He's been in some 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 fights where he's had to you know, hold up through the course of three rounds. And he's going to be in there in his face the whole time, too. So I could see just a back-and-forth fight in a phone booth type of situation. But I like Jim Miller in that environment on this specific card. UFC 300, just the fire, the energy in that arena, I think it's just going to push Jim Miller over the edge. But I could see it going either way. I could definitely see even Bobby, Bobby Green catching him with something. But what do you think? Well, yeah, this was a fight that I really didn't know who I was going to pick. I mean, you've kind of convinced me into taking Jim Miller. Yeah. I'll take Jim Miller by finish, to be honest. Huh? You know, I like maybe the finish I was, too, though. That's the thing. I, was I just, see a finish. I was just, you know, kind of clowning you for saying decision. But the more I think about it, does Jim Miller have it in him to finish Bobby Green? I do feel like we could see a situation where he just does more damage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But the minute winner is going to be Bobby Green, which is why it's so hard for me to... I mean, this is a guy in Jim Miller who lost to Alexander Hernandez recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's it's tough to pick somebody like that. But I don't know. I'm I'm... Not That's a tough. fight. I, as of now, not a fight. I'm going to be gambling on whatsoever. I'm going to pick the underdog and Jim Miller to win by just doing more damage. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. It's a very close fight. Looking forward to it, though. Yeah. Going to enjoy that one as a fan. Let's move on to the next fight. Jessica Andrade taking on Marina Rodriguez. 
Rohan, the odds are, are turning. Uh, really? Marina Rodriguez started as a slight favorite. Now she's getting to plus money. Huh. But I'm going to be completely honest. I love Marina Rodriguez in this spot. Absolutely love. I don't know why she's the underdog here. I don't either, to be I, honest. It really <laughs> makes no sense to me. Jessica Andrade, well, she had, what, a three, four fight losing streak, yep. correct? Yep. And she's coming off a win against Mackenzie Dern. But Mackenzie Dern's been getting absolutely exposed recently. Mm -hmm. I mean, as long as you have somewhat solid takedown defense, you're going to run through this girl. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is a bad stylistic matchup for Andrade. I feel like Rodriguez will be able to stuff the takedowns if Andrade decides to shoot. Marina Rodriguez looked incredible against, you know, Michelle Watterson Gomez. It is Michelle Watterson. But, I mean, she looked great, crisp. And the only thing that's shying me away of a massive bet on Rodriguez is the age. She's 37. Mm -hmm. But look how crisp she looked in that fight against Michelle Watterson. Yeah. I mean, I don't think she's deteriorating whatsoever. I like Marina Rodriguez. I could see a finish, but I think Andrade's just so tough. But here's the thing about Andrade, right? She keeps cutting up 115, 125, 115, 125. Is that going to hurt her durability? Mm -hmm. We don't know. Um, I don't know. I I'm very confident in Rodriguez. I think she wins. Finish or decision, I'll say she wins a decision, but I could definitely see a knockout. Yeah, this is a tough fight for me to call, too. I've seen a lot of people side with Andrade, just mainly because they're unfamiliar with, with Marina. Like, I'm, I've seen a lot of people just like, oh, based on the credibility of Andrade as a former champ and all that. Like, yeah, she's the younger fighter. She's got the power in her hands. But like you said, Marina, in that rematch where a lot of people were questioning, will she make a statement? Will she wrap up this, this you know, little rivalry with Michelle Watterson Gomez? She put a stamp on it, completely ended those talks, uh, did what she did again, and looked great doing it. And I, look... Could she get caught in this fight by, not, by an Andrade looping overhand? Of course, but that's the case in any Jessica Andrade fight. And the, the fact of the matter is, Andrade has not looked good in her last fights other than the Dern fight. Like you said, I mean, she's losing pretty convincingly. And it's like, I don't know if I can trust her to find that shot against the rangier, longer fighter. And Marina Rodriguez is typically a smart fighter is what I like about her too. Like she uses her tools and her range very well. In the clinch as well is where I think she's going to have a big advantage in this fight. If at any point she does stuff a, a takedown of Andrade's and it gets a little stagnant against the cage, I trust Marina way more to land damaging shots, use her elbows. She has great um, v variety in which yep. she throws with. So I, I trust her a little bit more in this matchup. If there isn't a finish, like I just... I don't think there's a finish if Rodriguez wins. I, I could see Andrade catching it with something, but uh, for me, the safer pick is Rodriguez. So I'm going to side with her here by decision, but I could definitely see a close fight in which, you know, Andrade gets a hand raise. I, I do think Andrade is relying on a knockout in this one. I yeah. do think, I, I think the, the minute winner will clearly be Rodriguez. I mean, I think the Muay Thai, the kickboxing, it's going to be so crisp. Again, I could see one of those overhands catching her. I mean, you look at that Lamos fight. You can't yeah, look yeah, past yeah, that. Yeah, you just yeah, can't. Yeah, I mean, yeah. she got hurt badly in that fight. But when have we seen Marina Rodriguez rocked like that before? Has she been knocked out before that? I don't think so. That was her first time ever getting finished, ever, that mm -hmm. Lamos fight. Um, I feel like, and here's the thing about that Lamos fight. Lamos is about the same height as Rodriguez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Andrade is going to be a lot shorter. I feel like Rodriguez will be able to keep her distance even better. And with that Lamos fight... Rod Rodriguez was winning the first two rounds exactly. of that fight. I, I like Rodriguez here. Of course, Andrade could catch her. Of course, it's it's Andrade, right? That's what she does. Um, but I'm confident, man. I think Marina Rodriguez gets this one done. Let's move on to the next fight of the card. What do we got here? We have Jalen Jalen Turner yes, taking sir. on Hanato Moicano. I'm gonna be honest. I, I I was not impressed with Hanato Moicano in his last fight against Drew Dober. Mm. Um, he just. He, he didn't have anything to offer on the feet. That's it. I mean, I feel like Jalen Turner will be able to stuff the takedown, and I think he'll win a 29-28 decision, to be completely honest. I mean, when Moicano was standing with Dober, he didn't want to be there. It looked yeah. like he didn't want to be there, and he just kept spamming takedowns, spamming takedowns. He really had nothing to offer on the feet. Yes, he landed from time to time, but he didn't really give him anything, you know, that would scare Dober. Here's the thing. We all know what's going to happen in round three to Jalen Turner. He's going to slow down. Will it get to round three? I don't know. But I think Jalen Turner will do enough in rounds one and rounds two to to win a clear decision. I like Jalen Turner uh, on the money line. I do. Uh, I think he's like minus 220, minus 230. Uh, I like Jalen Turner as a money line side and then like a hedge Moicano round three submission. 
I feel like that's a perfect way to bet this fight. Yeah, I think you laid it out perfectly. Look, Jalen Turner, we know he slows down as the fight goes on. But if you look at this guy's resume, he, we're arguably looking at an undefeated fighter if he doesn't lose his head in just a few you know, acute scenarios. Like against yep. Gamrot, people argue that he won that fight. I'm eh, I'm a little on I the think he won that. that fight. I think he might have won that fight too. Dan Hooker, I personally thought he lost based on damage as well, but it was such a close fight. And if he doesn't lose himself later in the rounds and is a little bit smarter and a little cleaner, he wins that fight easily. So we are potentially looking at a guy who, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, could have a seven fight win streak. I think the fact that those two losses came, you know, in a row are kind of scaring people a little bit. But this guy's never been submitted. What, how is, how is Moicano going to finish him if he doesn't submit him? I don't think he's knocking him out. Like you said, he didn't want to stand with Drew Dober. And this guy is very, very clean on the feet. He mixes up his kicks so, so well. He caught Dan Hooker. I don't know how the – oh, was it he that caught Dan Hooker or Dan Hooker caught him with a front kick? It was flushed to the face. I can't remember now. I believe Turner caught Hooker. Yeah, with yeah. It was – he caught – I don't know how the fuck Dan Hooker ate that shit because it was yeah. so clean, man. That was bad. Um, like that's the type of striker that he is, though. He is a very dangerous striker from all angles. He'll catch you – uh, off guard if you're not paying attention and I think this is just a bad stylistic matchup for Moicano because if he's not going to be able to continuously take and hold Jalen Turner down maybe like you said in the third round he starts to find success there but if he's not doing that early on I think in a, in a three round fight Jalen's going to do enough early so I, I like Jalen honestly inside the distance I think he's 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 still learning right he's young man he's what but he's so talented 28 man. years old 28. He's, he's just hitting his yeah. prime he's got to figure out the cardio we, we all know that but once he cleans that up yep. this is somebody that I really think could be a problem moving forward. So I'm going to think, I'm going to pick, uh, excuse me, Jalen Turner inside the distance. I think he finds a knockout finish. I don't know. I mean, Renato Moicano is so, so He's tough, tough I man. Mean, He's tough. so durable. I don't know if Turner gets him out. And the reason, like, I'm staying away from, like, hammering Jalen Turner is Moicano's durable, right? And if it gets to that round three, I do think, I know Turner's never been submitted, right? But I do think Moicano's live for a submission. Yeah, because for sure. For regardless, sure. if you've been submitted, if you've not been submitted, if Turner's death gassed in round three, it's going to be a problem. But I do think he's working on that cardio. I think when he hurts Moicano early, I think he'll be patient. I'm going to pick uh, Jalen Turner by decision. He's going by finish. I'm taking by points. Let's move on to the next fight. Oh, my God. Another banger. Another banger. fight, another banger, man. Sadiq Yusuf taking on Diego Lopes. Our boy Lopez. Diego Lopes liked a post of ours, if you don't know. He did. Yeah. Diego Lopes. <laughs> this is one of my favorite fighters in the UFC. Top five favorite fighters. This guy is just so skilled. I mean, on his Brazilian jiu-jitsu, in my opinion, is the best yeah. in the UFC right now. I mean, look what he did to Gavin Tucker. He made him look... Gavin Tucker's a, a solid fighter on the ground. And... Diego Lopez made him look like a fish out of water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he comes comes back in that Pat Sabatini fight and gets a knockout. We didn't know he had that in him. Mm -hmm. He knocks out Pat Sabatini. I mean, Damon Jackson did knock out Pat Sabatini. True. But <laughs> Diego Lopez looked good on the feet, showed that he's well-rounded. And here's the thing about Sadiq Yusuf. I wasn't impressed with his last fight at all uh, against Edson Barboza. Edson... Edson Barboza, I, I bet on Sadiq in that fight, thinking, oh, man, Edson's on his way out. This is a guy that got dropped by Bryce Mitchell. He just wasn't looking good. And uh, Sadiq had round one, and he lost every single round right. past round one. Um, I think Sadiq Yusuf will hurt Lopez. He doesn't have the best striking defense, but I don't think it'll be enough to knock him out. I think Lopez will find a submission or finish. I, Lopez by inside the distance. That's my prediction. I just think this guy is so skilled. Wherever I think he can catch Yusuf on the feet. Yusuf, not the best chin. Uh, and I think if it if it hits the mat, I think Lopez is always live for a submission. Even though Yusuf's never been submitted, Lopez is always live for a submission. That's how good he is on the ground. He's always live for a sub. Uh, I'll take Diego Lopez to win this one inside the distance. Yeah, I, obviously um, his opponent never been submitted. Uh, Sadiq Yusuf, but he looked horrible in his last fight. Horrible. And I thought, you know, after that first round, it was smooth sailing against Edson Barboza, who's up there in age as well. But, I mean, he got chinned once, like rocked once bad. It looked like Edson could have finished him earlier, like in the second round or so. Never got it done, obviously. He survived, but he did not look good in that fight. And against Diego Lopes, he is just a different level on the mat. And like you said, no submission losses. He hasn't fought anybody that I could see, you know, uh, the same style in. Like, like Andre Feely is low-key the best 
grappler that he's fought, uh, other than Edson Barboza, who was 36 at the time and really isn't a jiu-jitsu practitioner. Diego Lopes is by far the best grappler that Sadiq Yusuf has ever faced. And I think, like you said in his last fight, he showed us that he actually does have a technical ability on the feet. And Yusuf is not the most technical guy. He usually wins by just out being the bigger fighter, the stronger fighter, the more athletic fighter. I think in this fight, he's not going to have a speed advantage. And if this fight at any point hits the mat for an extended period of time, he is going to be in big trouble because Diego Lopes, he can find an arm. He can get to your neck from any angle, man. This guy is so, so nasty. So was the, was he ever an underdog in this fight? He wasn't, right? He opened as a favorite? I'm not sure. Because I um, think now he's a pretty pretty uh, comfortable favorite, like minus 130, minus 140. So but, but but now the odds are getting closer. He's getting closer to even. People okay, are betting okay, yeah. I, I love I love that, then. I love Diego Lopes as, as a bet, a straight bet here, man. He is in uh, a position, I think, that he has a clear advantage in, uh, in the grappling. And... Um, his striking is good as well. So, yeah, I, I was not impressed with Sadiq Yusuf, and I think Diego Lopes gets the job done. Yeah, I feel like the safest bet here is fight to not go the distance because, mm. you know, have we seen Lopez ever been knocked out? I believe so on the regionals. Yeah, two times. He's been knocked out two times. I could see an overhand from Yusuf connecting when Lopez gets overzealous, but I do feel like Lopez most likely wins, most likely wins by submission, but maybe gets a knockout again. Yusuf, not the best chin. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to take Lopez inside the distance as my official prediction, and so will Rohan. Let's move on to the next fight on the card. We have, is this Kayla Harrison? Versus yeah, Kayla Holly Harrison, Holm. Holly Holm, the debut. Oh, my God. Um, I'm excited. I mean, I know a lot of people aren't excited for this fight. I'm excited. I'm excited to see how Kayla Harrison will fare in the UFC. She's almost minus 500. I, that's insane. Um, this is somebody who didn't finish Aspen Ladd in her last fight. You shouldn't be minus 500, even against a 42-year-old Holly Holm. Also, Kayla Harrison's never made the weight. She could gas out after one round. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to take Kayla Harrison by 29-28 decision. I think, I think she does enough. I don't think she finishes Holly Holm because, again, if she's not finishing Aspen Ladd, I doubt she finishes Holly Holm. Uh, Holly Holm's got some solid takedown defense as well. Uh, I think Holly Holm will win moments. I think she's a live dog. I think the odds on this fight are absolutely ridiculous. I think the side is Holly Holm. But uh, for a prediction, give me Kayla Harrison. I might have to bet home money line, though. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think this line should be probably closer to minus 250, minus 300 Kayla Harrison. Minus 500 seems a little crazy for somebody who's making their debut at a division that they've never fought at. So like, Or at a weight that they've never fought at. If you're looking at Holly Holm's career, she had a nice win against Yana Santos. Eh, not that impressive. Lost to Ketlin Vieira, beat Irene Aldana, but this is like four years ago now. Like, she's only fought twice in the past three, four years. So that's, I guess, where the worry comes into play on the home side. But with Kayla, there's a lot of question marks. Like you said, never fought at this weight. First UFC fight against an experienced fighter like Holly Holm, a former champion. Like, there's a lot of question marks here. Obviously did not look too good on her way out of the PFL, but had some dominant showings in the PFL as well. And I think she's, regardless of anything on the feet, she's going to have a clear advantage on the ground. Will she, I think we, we're going to see a scenario here where Kayla Harrison is shooting takedown after takedown after takedown, probably holds Holly Holm down for, you know, minutes at a time, but Holm will be a, a, able to work her way back to her feet enough of the time to keep it interesting. Uh, I'm curious to see how her cardio holds up because I think in the later round, the third round, if she is not well adapted to this division enough to feel confident in herself and her wrestling later in the fight, it's going to be an issue because Holly Holm, look, she's she's seasoned, man, and she's a boxer. Like, she's got a great uh, background on the feet. Uh, she's probably the cleaner fighter between the two on the feet uh, for sure, actually, I think. Um, it's all a matter of if Kayla Harrison can just hold Holly Holm down. I don't think she finds a submission finish, but I'm going to say decision win for Kayla Harrison just because she does enough on the control. I know judges are, are scoring damage over control, but when you're getting controlled, it's hard to score damage. So I think that's what we see here. Yeah, it sounds kind of crazy, but I do think that if there is a finish in this fight, it comes from the Holly Holm side. I don't see Harrison getting a finish, and I feel like if there is one, it's because Harrison's gassed out in yeah, round yeah, three. Yeah. This, we and don't know how her cardio will be. We don't. We don't. Um, I'm going to pick Kayla Harrison, though. I think she'll have a massive grappling advantage, but not enough to finish. I'll take Harrison by close decision, but uh, that money line is absolutely ridiculous. Let's move on to the next fight on the card. Calvin Cater versus Aljamain Sterling. Sleeper alert. Sleeper. I'm excited to see the debut at 145 uh, for Sterling because I think he's going to look really, really good. I really do. It's going to be tough to take down Cater. It's going to be tough to beat, you know, the long strikes of Cater as well, to get past them, to get him in the clinch. But here's the thing about Cater. Cater is incredible takedown defense, right? Mm -hmm. But 
the thing about Aljamain Sterling is he doesn't take you down. He takes you up. He gets the back. He drags you down when he's up top, when he's, you know, backpacking you. That's what he is. He's the backpack. I I do think 145-pound Aljamain Sterling is, is going to look really good. I think that weight cut was playing a massive effect on him. And he was still a champion. And he was still winning those fights convincingly. And he still beat Henry Cejudo, five-round fight. I think he's going to look even better here. I think Cater will have his moments. I think Sterling will get hit with shots. But again, I think Sterling can mix up the leg kicks as well. Cater coming off an absolutely brutal leg injury against Arnold Allen. Absolutely nasty. Broke his leg. I think uh, Sterling, I think it's, I don't know if he gets a finish. I'm going to say uh, 30, 27, 29, 28 decision for Sterling. I think he looks really good in this one. Yeah, I think decision win for Sterling is probably the pick for me as well. Although I could see him snatching up the neck, man. This guy, the thing about Aljamain Sterling Look, his striking isn't the most beautiful thing to watch. He's not a technician, but he confuses his opponents because his entries and the way he sets things up are so, so crazy sometimes. It's just hard to get a read on him. Like, I think in this fight, it's it's a good matchup because Cater doesn't really sway too much from what he knows. He's a boxer at the end of the day. He's a fundamental boxer, got some of the best boxing in the division, don't get me wrong, but against somebody like Sterling who's going to be just all sorts of angles, all sorts of cadences, throwing three, four, five punches at a time, mixing in the kicks. Like you said, I think that's uh, definitely going to pay dividends in this fight is his use of the leg kicks because he does have long techniques, Aljo, as well. If he doesn't just get overzealous and leave his chin up in the air like an idiot, like he did against Sean O'Malley, he won't get caught. But obviously, that, that potential for that does exist. I think that Aljamain Sterling, though, will win enough minutes with the wrestling. He'll get his back a bunch of times. I think Cater might be able to defend the neck. Like, he's got 91% takedown defense. He's not going to be easy to take down. But like you said, Aljo is so good at just finding ways to get to your back. Um, and I think he's going to, to do that maybe once or twice in this fight. I think uh, he wins the decision. It's a three-round fight. I think he wins it probably 30-27. So I'm, I like this fight for Aljo, man. I'm excited to see what he looks like at uh, a weight class where I think he'll be better adapted, man. You've seen the pics of this guy when it's getting closer to fight day, and he looks so freaking jacked and so you know uh, pumped. So I, I just think that at this weight class, he'll have an easier time cutting weight. And uh, we'll look a little better. So, yeah. I mean, just another thing. Cater's recently turned 36 years old. Oof, yeah. A year, a year and a half long layoff. That's I mean, yeah. that, that's, it's that's only going to favor Aljo even more. Um, I know he's coming off a brutal knockout, but being at 145 is going to help out his chin. Agreed. You know, he's, that guy was cutting a lot, a lot of weight to get to 135. Aljo's a big yeah, guy. Yeah, he walks around at, what, like 175? I've and seen sometimes. Something like that. <laughs> Crazy. Um, I, I think Aljamain Sterling wins by decision, um, but definitely looking forward to this one. All right, let's move on to the featured prelim, Yuri Prohaska versus Alexander Rakic. We have not seen Rakic. What is it? Let me see if I can say off the top of my head. It's been two years and a month, if I'm not mistaken. It has been... Yeah, literally two, two years in a month <laughs> where he blew his knee out against Jan Blachowicz. I thought he was winning that fight. In a fight he was winning. You are correct. I think this guy's really good. I'm excited to see how he comes back after that layoff. This is a guy that has cardio. He's got good kickboxing. He's got solid boxing, and he can grapple as well. I think Jerry Prohaska is going to be overrated. I think uh, he just... Both he and Alex Pereira didn't look too good to me in that fight, yeah. in the championship <laughs> fight. I think I think this is I think Rakic can get takedowns here. I think Rakic can win moments on the feet. I do think Jiri will have his moments. Again, a lot of close fights on this card. But um I think Alexander Rakic, I think he's just on a level above, to be completely honest. And this guy's skilled. What is he, 30 years old as well? I mean, this guy's now in his fighting prime. He's coming off coming back after a big layoff. But there's something telling me that he's gonna come back even better than he was before. I like Alexander Rakic. Again, this guy couldn't finish me. He couldn't finish Rohan. He couldn't finish this fucking microphone. But I do think Rakic will win by fairly dominant decision. What do you think? Yeah, I like Rakic to win as well. And I was fairly high on this guy before he got hurt. I thought, like you said, he was winning that Jan Blachowicz fight pretty convincingly. Obviously, it lasted, what, like a round or two. But he looked really good. And the thing about Rakic, his fighting style is much more polished and clean than Yuri. The thing about Yuri is, like, we know his hand's low. He's just going to dart at you with a few combos. He might be able to get you to the mat, but he's just a wild card. That's Yuri's whole fighting style. But Rakic is much more technical, and he has, he mixes it up really well. Matter of fact, one of the nastiest knockouts I've seen is when he got... 
Jimmy Manoa. Jimmy Manoa, yeah. that head kick. Beautiful. Beautiful the way he set that up. And he has a similar fighting style, I guess, in the sense that he likes to dart in. Like, yeah. he'll throw a few fun, uh, punches and then l land with something or end the combination with something big. Um, that's similar to how Yuri likes to fight. So I think that might cancel it itself out a little bit between the two. And we could see more of a cagey fight. But I think that, again, that favors Rockets because he's so... Clean. He's so much more clean than Yuri. I think the the leg kicks that's gonna add up. The body kicks. He mixes it up so well to the body as well. And um, yeah, I just I, I like him in this fight, man. I I don't know if Yuri's overrated, um, but I just think of like who he's beaten on his way. Who he's beat, sorry, on his way to the title. Like Dominic Reyes was kind of on the decline. I think he's overrated. He I mean, I'll just yeah, say like, I do think the guy's overrated. Maybe, maybe, maybe you're right about that. Like Uzdemir, everybody's beating Uzdemir nowadays. Glover Teixeira, what, 39 years old, and it was a war. He almost lost to Glover Teixeira. Like, you know, it's not maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this yeah. guy is I, overrated. Okay, this is a okay. guy. I see. You're convinced. Compare what just... Jamal Hill did to Glover Teixeira to what Jiri did to Glover Teixeira. Yeah. Jiri, if that fight lasted another 30 seconds, Jiri Prohaska would have never been yeah. the champion. That's yeah. the thing. I, I think three this round guy's fight overrated. though. Three round fight though. Like, I don't, I don't think know. it'll matter. Both guys have good, really good cardio. We true, saw true, true. Alexander Rakic never slow down in his fight against Anthony Smith. Go true, all true, five true. rounds. Dominate oh, that was every a war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He dominated. He dominated though. Absolutely dominated. Yeah. I don't think he dominates Prohaska like that, but I think it's a, I think it's a, a clear decision victory for yeah. Alexander Rakic. And I see Jiri in interviews. I mean, he's extremely confident. He's like, once I beat Rakic. Um, I better get the title shot because I'm a former champion. All that, all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I don't. I just don't think it's a good stylistic matchup for him. Um, yeah, I, I like Rockets. Any final words? No, I just. I, it's tough to get a read on Rockets, obviously, just because he's been out for so long. Yeah. But just based on the work that he's put in up to that point, I think that he's the cleaner fighter. I always say that, you know that. But that's I, your go -to. I, I think that's my that's my go to. Yeah. Whoever the cleaner fighter is, that's usually who I favor. But man, it's it's hard in this matchup. I just think there's gonna be so many openings. Yuri leaves his chin up in the air just for anybody to hit. So I think I could even see a finish to be honest. But I won't say that. I'll say decision win for Rockets. I think he'll land the better shots and get the decision. We're yeah. both going for Alexander Rockets to beat Yuri Prohaska. Let's move on to the first fight on the main card. A fight in which fans. I have no idea why this is on the main card, yeah, yeah, but yeah, I think yeah. it makes sense. So trying to build up this guy, you know, in a big spot, first fight on the main card. It's Bone Nickel taking on Cody Brundage. This might be my quickest breakdown of all time. I'm going to try to keep it under 20 seconds. Cody Brundage is dog shit. He got ragdolled by Cedric Dumas, was getting ragdolled by Jacob Malkoon before he sold a DQ. Um, sold a back of the headshot leading up to a DQ. And uh, was about to get triangle choked against Zachary Reese, a guy who's not that good. Until, you know, he slammed him on his head. Cody Brundage's career has been full of flukes. I think Cody Brundage sucks. I think Bo Nickel will absolutely maul Cody Brundage and win this fight within the first three minutes. What do you think? I really don't have much to add. Bo Nickel inside one round. That's my prediction as well. Cody Brundage, like, what is there to say? He, he sucks. Not if you're getting mauled by Cedric yeah, there's, Dumas, there's, there's, that what is Bo Nickel going to do? Man. And we've seen Dumas. I mean, this guy sucks. So, like you said, if that's happening, not to do MMA math, but Bo Nickel is going to destroy this man and i think like it doesn't matter that it's on the main card because it's gonna be over like this bro it's gonna yeah. take five seconds this though. should just be the first fight of the night just get, exactly. it, get it out of the, get way, it out the right? way man we know this is gonna be nothing uh I, if cody brundage wins this fight outside to... outside of a dq <laughs> which you know he's done against yeah, jacob true, malcoon true, this guy's true. a fucking bitch <laughs> but um i i i think um i think i'll stop watching mma if cody brundage it, that would be tragic for the sport i would say definitely would tragic let's move on <laughs> To a fight that, man, I don't know. Charles Oliveira versus Armin Sarukian. This is probably the fight I'm looking forward to the most on the card. Um, and it's because I really don't know who's going to win. I feel like, you look at the odds, Sarukian's what? A minus 230 favorite to Oliveira, plus 190. I feel like that's kind of crazy. We're talking about a former champion in Oliveira. A guy who has incredible power. A guy who has top-notch jujitsu. But then you rethink about the matchup, and it, it is a really good stylistic matchup for Armin Sarukian. He should be able to get takedowns. He should be able to escape submissions. I mean, this guy's really, really good on the ground. This guy who survived submission attempts from Islam Makhachev mm -hmm. looked incredible in that fight, and th that was his debut. Um, but again, then you look back at that. Then you look back at that Mateus Gamrot fight, and you're like, I don't know how good is this guy really. I feel like that was I feel like that was an off fight for Armin Sarukin to be completely honest. He's come back in his last few fights and he's looked a lot better. But here's the thing. I, I've got a weird feeling he's gonna get knocked out by Charles Oliveira. I do. This could look really, really bad, to mm -hmm. be completely honest. But I do think Charles Oliveira, this guy has weird power. I mean, look at that knockout against Benil Dariush. Yeah. Head kicked him, threw his guard, 
and it, it pretty much put him out on his feet. Yeah. Since when does Oliveira have power like that outside of his championship run at lightweight? It's insane. This guy, I don't know if it's steroids. I don't want to call it steroids. <laughs> but you, yeah. Justin Gaethje did an interview after his fight with Oliveira, and he said he's never been hit yeah, like Oliveira that. hit him before. Even Chandler, I mean, I feel like he has a quote similar to that. Like It's it's different. Yeah. It's weird power. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. This, is, this fight is so hard to call. I feel like the money line side is obviously Oliveira. Obviously. I mean, I would not be confident putting Saruki in parlays. This is the definition of a 50-50 fight in my eyes. Again, I'll let you choose first, and I'll come back after you break this one down. I struggle to see how Charles finishes Armand, and that's why I think I'm slightly leaning Armand by decision. But, but let me interrupt you. We've seen Armand get knocked out before. We have. We scene. have. Once we you have. have a bad chin, you don't really get it back. Yeah, 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 true, true, true. But there's scenarios where, like, you can get caught. Like, that that's just the thing we've seen happen. Like, with Brendan Allen in that first fight against Chris Curtis. Like, there's si situations where, in the heat of the moment, you just get caught with something that, like, he was throwing at the same time as him. Like, you can just get caught with something. So, I'm not, like, the biggest skeptic of Armand's durability. And Charles's durability is also a question. Like, we've seen him get finished countless times. Obviously, not recently. This guy's coming off of a great title run, uh, great fight, great win against Benil Dariush. But Sarukians beat that guy as well. Like... Uh, it's tough, man. It's really, really tough because I think Charles is really accepting of pressure because he's so confident in himself and his ability to get back. Like, we've seen that in, in every one of his title fights where he'll get down early, but then weather the storm. Like, in a three-round fight, this is not a title fight. You can't really have too many of those moments and not actually win the fight by finish because if you're going to put it in the in the judge's hands, like, we don't, we don't know. They're going to go off what they've seen. And the more damage, I think, might be caused by Armand, who's a great boxer. And this guy is so well-rounded. At this point in his career, he's on a streak now. Like, he's cruising beat Joaquin Silva. That's not the best name, but he took him out pretty easily. No, he didn't. He got rocked badly. He lost a round in that fight. And that's Joaquin Silva. He yeah. got rocked. He got rocked bad. It, what if that head kick but from Oliveira comes? Charles Oliveira's rocked in every fucking fight of What if that left hook from Oliveira comes? True, 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 man. It's going to be night-night. You th So you're picking Charles by finish? I'm, I'm picking Charles by finish. All right, I'm go ahead. I'm saying it right now. I mean, it, the way you're breaking it down, I'm just thinking and thinking. Sarukian could get finished, but Sarukian could also finish Oliveira. Don't Bro, get me wrong. But also, you think about the trajectory. Like, I, like I'm not one to say, oh, Charles, is, his age is going to be a big factor. How but old is he? he got, How old is Charles? What, like 33, 34? Can't be now? more than 30, 34 years old. But Armand's what? Armand's 27. Like, okay. Well, that's, a big, uh, that's a big difference, bro. Uh, is it, though? I think so. I, I, I think so. In a fight that this close, I think those are the sort of things that are going to matter. Like, I, Oliver's 34. I mean, that's pretty that's much... That's seven your, years, bro. That's a big gap. But what, but what does that mean? That means that Armand Sarukian is just now hitting his prime. He just took out Benil Dariush cleanly, and obviously so, so did Charles. Oliveira. But I get... You, whatever you're saying... And he took out Benil cleanly after Oliveira did the damage. Oh, my God. I don't know, bro. I don't know. It's tough to call. It's tough to call. It's tough to call. Like, I just don't think that... I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know. I don't know who to it's pick. It's tough. It's so tough. I don't know. It's so tough. I have to pick somebody. I'm going to pick Oliveira. Uh, but again, then you watch his fight against Gage. You watch his fight against Poirier. This is a guy this that's is the getting hurt early. This is the hardest fight to call. I'm Because he's getting hurt, man. He's getting fucking hurt. That's the thing about Charles. Look. If Michael Chandler was a little smarter in their interaction, he could have finished him. No fucking question. He had him hurt, hurt out. Like, it was, if, if Charles didn't move his head a little bit and grab his leg and Michael just found the target a little bit more, he was out. And we've seen Charles Oliveira get finished by lesser opponents than, than Armand Sarukian. So, given the fact that Sarukian is cruising right now, like, he's got all the momentum, I, I don't think he's going to get finished in this fight. Like, I just think that his chin is probably developing, and, like, as, as he gets into his, you know, prime. Like, I, I don't know, man. I don't see him getting finished in this fight, man. It's three rounds. I just think it's going to come down to the cumulative damage scored over the three rounds, and I think that Charles is going to have moments where he's rocked. So you think it's going to go the distance? Yeah. I don't see that happening whatsoever. I think this fight finishes. When's the last time a Charles Oliveira fight's gone the distance? I mean, but... <sighs> when? When? This is, bro, the two guys that have shown to get hurt. Someone's getting finished, in my opinion. When was the last time an uh, Oliveira... Do you want me to look? When was the last time an Oliveira fight has gone the distance? Let's see. Tony Ferguson. And he was beating the brakes off of Tony Ferguson. He would have fit that if that was anybody else. Yeah, that's true. Outside of that Ferguson fight, the last time an Oliveira fight... Went the distance. It was in 2014. 
I don't see a decision whatsoever. I think that someone's going to But, but Armand's finish. not like an idiot. Like, I, I think a lot of the time, like Gaethje, again, again, like he got him hurt. He hurt Charles really bad. Okay, is Michael Benil Dariush an idiot? No, 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 no. no. He but just felt the power. But also, I think Sarukin's better. He's a better fighter than all those guys, I think, at true, this stage in his career. Like, true. I just think that overall, he's going to be a lot more cautious and wary of the submission game because he's seen what's happened with all these guys that just get overzealous and too confident and too comfortable. They're going to get their neck snatched up. I don't think Armand's going to get his neck snatched up, but I also don't think he's going to be too crazy in looking for a finish because, like you said, if he hurts Charles, which is probably inevitable because the motherfucker gets hurt in every fucking fight, if he gets hurt, I don't think he's going to go all out for the finish. I think he's going to maintain his confidence and his composure and probably yeah i think he gets it done bro i'm, I'm going armand i'm not confident at all don't get me wrong like this this is the hardest fight for me personally to call on this fight you know, on this card because i just don't know um it's a crazy style a uh, clash of styles but um yeah i i just i'm a little more comfortable taking armand here but again, don't take my word. Like I'm not confident in this whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, you gotta agree that the money line side has to be Oliveira plus one ninety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Insane. If you're gonna bet a money line, you gotta just like we were talking about. Just the... like we were talking about last week with Brendan Allen versus Chris Curtis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brendan There's Allen was what a minus two ten, two twenty favorite. But we both agreed. You picked Allen with pretty much no confidence. But at the same time, you agreed the money lines had cleared the yeah, Curtis. Yeah, again, and Curtis that, that showed as well. Yeah, exactly. So, I, like you said, like you said, especially. But this is different because I think there will be a finish in this fight. I don't see this one hitting the scorecards. That's the thing. I, I, as you're talking, like no, you like you said, like when you're mentioning it the last time, uh, other than the Tony fight, which, like you said, any other but any other fighter that's gonna be a finish. 2014 is the last time he's really gone to decision. So, like, it's making me question. You know, does he, does he, I don't know, but that's the thing. He could get finished in this fight. I, it's tough. It's tough to call. It's tough to call. So I'm just going to say Armand by decision with zero confidence. I'm going to say Charles Oliveira inside the distance by KO again with zero confidence. Let's move on to the first of our championship fights or, you know, a championship fight, a BMF title fight. It is Justin Gaethje versus Max Holloway. Another fight. I don't know. I, this is a tough one to call. And it's just because we don't know how Max Holloway is going to look. We don't know, like, at lightweight, is he going to be better? Is he going to be worse? We saw him against Dustin Poirier, right? But I feel like he did that whole lightweight transition. That was a short notice fight. Mm -hmm. I feel like now he's had the time to properly get adjusted to lightweight. However, I think I got to go Gaethje. I mean, if there's a finish in the fight, all the finishing potentials on the Gaethje side. We know Holloway's not finishing Gaethje. It's just not happening. Mm -hmm. And I feel like... Max Holloway will be the minute winner, 100%. But I feel like leg kicks will be there all day, every day for Justin Gaethje. I think he'll be chopping Max Holloway down like a tree. Um, will this one fin be finished? I don't know. I think it's going to go to the scorecards. I got to pick Justin Gaethje because of that finish potential. I do think it hits the scorecards. I think Gaethje, once it hits the scorecards, Gaethje will have the bigger moments. The overall cumulative damage will be on the Gaethje side. I'm going to take Gaethje by a 48-47 decision. How do you feel? This is going to be a freaking war. It's five rounds too, right? This yep. is because it's a, it's technically a title fight. It's going to be a war, but I don't like the fact that Max Holloway still, after so freaking long, does not check leg kicks and doesn't seem to even care Like when he gets leg kicked. You got to be a little bit wary of the leg kicks when Just you're look fighting. look at that Volkanovski fight, Exactly. Right? The last one was a prime example of the fact that like when you don't check leg kicks as much as you believe in your ability to keep marching forward and this is max holloway a guy that's still after so many UFC, ufc fights never been finished on the feet he's never been knocked out um but the leg kicks are going to take a toll because justin gaethje the way he times them on when his opponent is just make, right about to come in he times it so well intercepts them right at the perfect time like i think we're going to see a lot of that in this fight if max doesn't check those kicks it could get a little ugly and it could look a little similar to that last Volk versus Max fight. I hope it doesn't get to that point. And I think that it won't because I think in the later rounds, they will get competitive. Max is a dog, man. Like At the end of the day, he's a dog. Like you said, I think at this point, he's much more adapted to the division. Like He's had time to actually get his body to a lightweight frame. Um, his boxing, I, I was watching the uh, countdown episode, like his sparring has looked really good. Obviously, he's not fighting Justin Gaethje. He's fighting his sparring partners, but it looks really, really good. He looks fast. He looks great. I just don't feel confident that he can finish him, that he can finish Justin Gaethje. And like you said, I think all the finishing upset, upside excuse me, is probably on the Gaethje side. That said, I think we see a five-round war. What we all expect out of these two guys, and uh, I just think Gaethje gets 
the edge because of the early rounds. I think the early rounds is where Gaethje's going to have a lot of success, especially, man, recently this guy has looked, he's impressed me. I, I, and this is Justin Gaethje, somebody that's challenged for a title multiple times. Like, it's hard to keep getting better and better and better. But this guy, I think, keeps getting better and better and better because his composure, he knows that he's got the power. It's all about can you really find the timing? And he's done that in his past uh, few fights. We just knocked out Dustin Poirier in a fight that I, or a result that I don't think any, anybody really saw coming. So he's looking really good right now. He's got a lot of momentum, and I'm going to side with Gaethje by decision. A crazy, crazy decision, but yeah, that's where I'm leaning. You know, I, I saw an interview with Gaethje earlier in the week, and he said that he aims on getting like a doctor stop. Yeah, 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 I saw that. Victory, that he just beats him up so bad he won't go away, and the doctor steps in. I could see that with leg kicks, to be honest, where mm. he does so much damage to the legs that Max Holloway is just like, I can't do it no more. Mm. But I don't know. Tough one to call how the fight finishes. I'm going to go Gaethje by decision. Would I be surprised if Max wins on volume? Not no at way, all. No way. Another close fight, but uh, give me Gaethje in this one to just do the more overall damage. Let's move on to the co-main event: Wei Li Zhang versus Zhao Nan Yan Yan Zhao Nan, Zhang Wei Li Wei Li Zhang, whatever you want to call. It. We're here, <laughs> co-main event. Um, you know, I want to pick Zhao Nan Yan Yan Zhao Nan. Sorry, I don't. I keep reading the name Zhao Nan. I want to pick Yan Zhao Nan. I, I do want to think she's improved that takedown defense. I mean, you know, what is she, like 30, 31 now? I, I want to yeah. think that she's, 34, you know. 34, actually. 34. Yeah. Regardless, I want to think that she's improving that takedown defense. Mm -hmm. But, like, we I haven't seen her tested since that Carlos Sparza fight. And every time I think about this matchup, I'm like, okay, maybe Zhao Nan will have her moments. But then you look at that Sparza fight. That was a beating, bro. She got ragdolled. Absolutely mauled. Mauled. Fucked up. Mauled on the ground. Ragdolled. I don't know if there are any more words to describe that beatdown, but it was on the mat. I mean, Carla Esparza beat this girl down. Xiao Nan, she's 34. I didn't even realize that. She's 34. I want to think she's making those improvements. I feel like she will stuff takedowns. I feel like she will look better with the takedown defense, but will it be enough throughout five rounds to do it? I got to go Zhang. I want to pick Xiao Nan, but I just, based off what I've seen from both fighters, Zhang, you know what? She's She wants to win. She's not going to be dumb. She's not going to go and do a five-round strike in war with Xiao Nan where she could lose her belt. I feel like uh, she fights a smart game plan. Look at that Lamos fight. She fought very intelligently. She won by clear decision and almost finished the fight on the mat. I'll go Zhang. I feel like Xiao Nan, if she starts stuffing takedowns, then you could look at a live bet uh, because I do feel like she's improving. Uh, I mean, she has to be. You know, That's what she's going to be training for this entire training camp, stuffing those takedowns. She's good on the feet. But... um. We haven't seen her prove there yet, so I got to go, Sean. Yeah, I got to agree with you. And you mentioned the Esparza fight was the last time Jan was really tested on the ground like that. We saw in person uh, uh, Zhang Weili do exactly what Carla did to Jan to Carla. Yeah. Like, that is really all I needed to see, man. And, like, that was not a good loss for Jan Zhao Nan. She's 34. So is Zhang Weili. It's, it's, a, it's a nice fight from that standpoint. Same age. Same really... Uh, uh, position in their career, I guess you could say. But I just, I trust Zhang Weili way more than I trust Yan Zhanan at this stage. And look at who she's beat. She destroyed Amanda Lemos, almost finished her. Carla Esparza ran through Carla Esparza. And I don't think people really saw that coming either. And then obviously destroyed Joanna in that uh, retirement fight of hers. Um, not all that impressive, but it was still a great win. And I just think that at this point, how can you really feel confident picking Yan? I think she, uh, Zhang Weili has the better hands. I, I am one that believes Yan, uh, Zhang Weili sorry, has the potential to be a two weight class champion. She is that good, that well-rounded. Um, I just think that she has every advantage she needs in this fight to get it done inside the distance, to be honest. Just because look at what she's doing to these girls. Like, she is obliterating them, and she honestly almost had Lemos out of there. So, yeah, I'm really confident here, guys. I, I think uh, she has pretty little issue here getting her hand raised. So I'm going to side with uh, Zhang Weili by a clear victory. Not much more to say about that one. Let's move on to the main event, Alex Pereira versus Jamal Hill. You know, when this fight first got announced as the main event, I remember at UFC 298, as soon as... Till Poria was finished knocking out Alexander Volkanovsky. Mm. We got the announcement from Dana White. And I wasn't excited at all, to be completely honest. I mean, I I just just wasn't. I mean, I feel like we could have had a better main event, like a Dreykus versus an Izzy. But the more we get closer to this fight, the more excited I get. Because I've got a strong prediction here. I, I think Jamal Hill knocks Alex Pereira out. I really do. I mean, guys, I, I, I'm a guy who I've watched so much UFC over the last four or five years. And Alex Pereira, I mean, the way he's come into the UFC and he's just looks so, so good on the feet. 
it's 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 unlike no other. But this guy has his flaws on the feed. He 100% does. Look at that Adesanya fight. He's getting caught with that right, with that with that backhand. And this is a completely different stylistic matchup. Jamal Hill is not a technician as, you know, as uh, Israel Adesanya is. But you, look at that Yuri Prohaska Alex Pereira fight. First of all, as I mentioned earlier when we were breaking down that Jiri fight, both guys look shit, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I really think that both guys look dog shit. Alex Pereira was getting caught from the, those right hands by Jiri as well. Yeah. Jiri was having success leading up to that knockout. I mean, I, don't get me wrong. Pereira was landing brutal calf kicks. Jamal Hill is a southpaw. I think, I feel like, Rohan, if this fight was taking place like five months later, I would be hammering Jamal Hill. The only thing that's scaring me is that Achilles tear. It happened in July. Mm. This fight is happening in April. Achilles tears usually take a year to recover from. This guy's probably been training for the past, what, two, three months. He's pro he probably only had five, six months to recover from an Achilles tear. We know how bad that injury is. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I feel like he wouldn't be doing this if, uh, if he wasn't healthy. But, man, as soon as those calf kicks kick in, we don't know. I mean... This this the the tide could turn so fast, yeah. but I feel like Jamal Hill's got a, a lot a lot of power. I feel like he won't put himself in a position that he'll get caught by that left he'll get left hook. Will get caught by any brutal strike from Pereira. Again, I want to say I'm all in on Hill, but that Achilles tear just scares me away. But um, I feel like again he wouldn't be doing this if he if he wasn't confident that uh, it would hold up. I'm going Jamal Hill to knock out Alex Pereira in uh, round two. I'll say. Yeah, I th I think I gotta agree with you, man. And and like you're saying, like as you were breaking that down, I think Jamal Hill. Obviously, I I, I trust the injury recovery. I think the timeline it's a little rushed, but but obviously, you, like you said, he wouldn't be doing this if he wasn't confident in his recovery. It's a weird stylistic match because even in all of Pereira's glory and what he's done in the sport, beating all these former champions, taking them out, it's it's crazy. But you can't deny, like you said, he's having scary moments in a lot of them and obviously got slept by Izzy. And this is not a guy that has you know, never been finished. We know he's got issues with his chin. And, he, I mean, he was hurt in a few moments against Bruno Silva. He was hurt in the first Izzy fight a few times. He was obviously knocked out against Izzy. Then hurt a little bit in the Jan fight. Then hurt again by Yuri. He's constantly, constantly getting hurt. And you're never all the way confident that, oh, Pereira's going to weather this and he's going to get it done. Like, even against Yuri, I picked Yuri in that fight, I think, just because I thought the chaotic style would favor Yuri. And Alex, when he's throwing that left hook, we saw it against Izzy, he leaves his chin up. Like, even when he's just standing there, he's got a loose style and he can be hit. And like you said, Jamal is going to look to make this a war. Um, we've seen this guy go have some crazy fights. I mean, you just look at the one where he had with with Glover Teixeira. That was a five round war. I mean, you five round that? beating. It was a it was a beating. It was a beating. But you remember that visual of the the yeah, towel squeeze on yeah. his head and all the blood pouring from. This is a guy that has experience in actual five round fights, and I think I I trust him more in the later rounds here. I don't know if that's crazy to say. Like I think the longer I don't even think it fight, gets there to be honest. Yeah, I don't think it gets there either. But I think the longer it goes, the more I trust Jamal Hill to just kind of make it ugly. And he has a way of just throwing those looping shots with his chin down which is the thing in this fight that you got to be careful of is, is having your chin protected at all times. I think Jamal does a little better job at being aware of where his chin is. And man, he's got power for days. That's the thing. He's got crazy power. Like Alex has crazy power. We know this in his left hand. If he connects, maybe he puts out Jamal Hill if he if he gets a little overzealous. I, but I don't see that. I don't see I don't that see either. It either. I don't see it either. I don't think, I, to be completely honest, unless Jamal Hill gets severely hurt to his legs, when, when both are fresh, I don't see Pereira really having any success with his boxing yeah, whatsoever. I, it's a weird thing. It's a, Because, look. If this fight was taking place four months later, I'm hammering Jamal Hill. Can I just that you, Achilles tertiary scared worry me. At any, do you worry at all about, like, the leg kicks? Because there, there's a yeah. Way. Like yeah. Pereira's, yeah, yeah, Pereira's he tore like, his Achilles. Exactly, exactly. It's so gonna that's be what I'm saying. There's yeah. the path, right, for him to get Jamal just thinking about the leg. Just mix it up to the legs, to the body. Even mixing a few head kicks, just get Jamal thinking, and then there comes the left hook. Like, it's the chance for him to catch Jamal with something, especially because he's going to be worried about the injury, yeah. like, is there. But like you said, the boxing, if it's just a clear boxing fight, Once like, he gets him up against the fence, as long as he doesn't do what Jiri did, as long as Jamal doesn't run into that left hook, mm -hmm. right, if he just stays composed... This guy has the power where he doesn't need to dive into a shot like that. Yeah. This guy can be composed and knock Alex Pereira out. I really think so. But again, the leg kicks, it, it's scaring me. But Jamal Hill's a southpaw, right? As true, I mentioned at true. the top. Jamal Hill's a southpaw. It's going to be harder for Pereira. You look at that Pereira-Prohaska fight. 
Both are orthodox. He was chopping that leg down. I'm curious to see how Pereira does against the southpaw true, with those true, kicks. True. The Achilles tear is scary, but I'm firm. Jamal Hill, I think he'll knock out Alex Pereira. As soon as I see him getting hurt to the legs, I'm betting Alex Pereira on the live bet. But, you know, as long as he survives that early onslaught, or the as long as he, you know, survives the leg kicks at all, I'm going Jamal Hill. And, um... Plus money, I think, is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, I love it, too, at plus money. Insane. I think, like, I think inside the Insane. Distance. Yeah, I, I I agree with you. Uh, Jamal Hill is my pick as well, and I like I don't think it gets to the later rounds because I think it's going to be a scenario where early in the fight, Alex maybe thinks he has him hurt to the legs a little bit, starts to push, and then Jamal just catches him with something coming in because he's got crazy power as well. It's going to be a crazy fight, a crazy card, but I think I agree with you on that one. I, and I see, last thing I'll say, I see a lot of people saying that Hill is bluffing when he's saying that he's gonna strike with Pereira and knock him out. Why? Then, Everybody's. Yeah, I don't think. I don't think he's bluffing. I don't think. I don't think Jamal Hill will shoot a takedown. I don't. Oh, I don't think so either. I think he's gonna stay on the feet this entire fight, and I think he knocks out Alex Pereira, folks. We did it. About what? Almost an hour, dude. We've but it deserves talking. it, man. Oh, this 100%. card deserves it for sure. A hundred percent. Definitely looking forward to Saturday. As I mentioned at the top, if you want to get our UFC 300 bets and breakdowns. For completely free. We're doing a free trial. Just click the link below in the description of this video. Please leave us a like, comment, subscribe. It really, really does go a long way, especially for, you know, smaller creators that are only trying to grow and grow. Um, but if you enjoyed, man, just keep tuning in because we're going to keep providing this insight. Really looking forward to UFC 300. Any final words? Nah, man. Enjoy, man. Let's just enjoy. There's going to be a freaking crazy card. A lot of violence. Maybe a lot of upsets. Let's just enjoy. I'm excited. Folks, that's all we got. Looking forward to Saturday. It's been Lucas. It's been Rohan. Adios. Peace.